What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Looking good on my end. We do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jacksonville, Florida. Lady Bar. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's go. Boys, I'm excited for this one. Very, very excited. Before we dive in, do me a favor. Please kindly introduce yourself. Obviously, you're in Jacksonville, but uh, plug and promote anything and everything that you guys would like. You can go first, Dylan. All right, so uh, my name is Dylan. Um, I'm the uh, um, instrumentalist and uh, singer-songwriter for Lady Ebor. Um, yeah, we got three releases out. Um, got uh, four more coming out later this year, so excited for it. We're excited, too. Anything, anything you want to plug or promote, yes, Jared? Before, before we, before we get started, anything else? No. <laughs> Jared, it looks like you're in the process of of doing a bunch of soundproofing behind you. I was in the process, and now I'm about to be in the process of ripping it down because we are moving. Oh, okay, where are you moving to? Yep. Uh, we're I'm still in Jacksonville. Still in Jacksonville, just just a little ways down the road. Cool. Found a better place, a better rent. <laughs> uh, there you go. Can't beat that. Uh, I yeah. think a, a good place to start is, is how did you guys come up with a band name? And were there any other like band names that you almost picked before you decided on Lady Ebor? So <laughs> it's actually funny. I actually wrote a song called Lady Ebor. And, uh, you know, we were just, you know, really struggling to find a name that we thought would be really good. And, uh, you know, one day we're just texting on the chat and, and uh, I was like, what about what about just Lady Ebor? Like, what about that as the band name? And we agreed. And uh, that's what we ran with. What was the reasoning behind it, though? Like, why did you call the song title that? And how did it resonate with you so much that you said this should be the band name? OK, so and this is going to sound really stupid. but So, like, <laughs> there's this food truck that shows up outside of where I work. It's called Cafe Ebor. So I started this song writing, trying to write around the concept of Cafe Ebor. And just as the song was evolving, it turned into Lady Ebor. And that's just kind of what I named the song. And that, this was before we even considered it as a band name. Um, but then that's just kind of how it happened, you know? That's cool. And I know, I know, Jared. When you when you're hanging in chat all the time, you, we always discuss about how you guys are are working on more band members, as far as like the horn section and stuff like that. How is that coming along? Um, yeah. So we we both, you know, we're both uh, fathers of young children. So you know, things are moving a little slower than anticipated. Um, but I mean, we are we are ready. We we're almost ready. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be uh, finding some people. Uh, we want to make sure that you know we are as true to the sound that you hear on the record as we are live. This will be like the live show debut when it's ready. There's been no shows at, at this point so far. Right. Yeah. None. Okay. And, you, and have you guys been in previous projects before this? And how did you link up and find each other? Uh, so I actually, uh, so I'm not from Jacksonville. I moved to Jacksonville back in 2018 and I, and I was kind of going through a little rough period in my life and, uh, I had some personal struggles I had to get through. Um, but I actually, um, reached out to, to Jared, um, back in 2001. Um, and, uh, you know, just trying to get out there, trying to get involved in, with something musically. Um, I'm not even sure what I wanted to do, especially with, with our genre. We do kind of like a weird uh variation genre to like reggae ska um but you know they were they were looking for a reggae singer at the time you know and i was probably not ready for all that at one point but i was just like whatever okay let's just do it and uh, we met up at a uh a local rehearsal studio um in jacksonville called stay tuned studios and i jammed with him and, and the band we had at the time and uh we knew that we had something from the first practice so uh uh, we just kind of refined the sound over the years. Cool. Who does who does all the all the recordings that you guys do? So uh, we record at uh, um, uh, Rockbot Studios in uh, downtown Jacksonville. It's uh, um, 
Josh Cobb's the uh, producer for our music, and, and he's phenomenal. He's a great musician, um, but just a really great musical mind. And uh, he, he's produced all of our uh, songs so far. So we have three releases out right now. We have another four slated to release a little bit later this year. Uh, we're going to try to couple that with a, a good marketing and promotional effort. Um, but he, yeah, just fantastic. He's really done a lot for us as far as, uh, you know, kind of helping shape our sound and helping us meet other musicians, especially, you know, the horn player that we play with is phenomenal. His name is Paul Tafoya. Um, and he helped kind of build that relationship and help us, uh, you know, start working with him. So we're forever grateful for that. Was that like just a session person that he called in that he just had in his Rolodex? It was like, I know a guy that's a perfect fit for to, to amp yep. up the sound. Oh, I love when that happens. That's well, it's awesome. funny. Yeah, well, it's funny. Like he, he was like, I've never worked with him before, but I know he's awesome. So, uh, you know, let's just let's just make it happen. And he really important. It's, it's so funny. So for the first uh, set of sessions, we were in the studio. Um, we were in the mindset of we're ready to play live right now. We don't want horns because a horn player is really hard to find. And we got in the studio and, you know, halfway, you know, by the third session, he was like, I really think we should do horns. And, you know, I was very reluctant. Uh, me and Jared talked about it a lot. Um, and then, you know, we told him, okay, we, we really don't want to do that because we want to be ready to um, play live and it's going to be hard to find a horn player. And so, um, you know, he dropped it for, you know, the rest of that session. And then the next session he was like, I really think we need to find a horn player. And we were just <laughs> like, okay, who you, who you got? You know? And yep. uh, so he set us up with Paul, and it, I mean, it's just been awesome. He, I, I think Paul is a fantastic horn player. Hell yeah! Uh, how far apart are you guys right now from each other in Jacksonville? Like 10, 15 minutes, hour? About 10, 15 minutes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did, did did you both bring hot sauce for today? I did. So I have uh, excellent. I have Cristal, and then I also have. <laughs> Frank's Red Hot uh, Buffalo Wing Sauce. They count. And I know you got something special, Jared. You got, let me see that one more time. You got the Scotch, Scotch Bonnet Mango. Oh, man, that's, that seems like it's going to yeah. be quite, quite uh, skullville <laughs> <laughs> Have you, have you? That was delicious. Jared, I know you've seen me do a bunch of interviews before, uh, so you're probably prepped for this, but have you thought about a, a movie or TV show that if I look up something on the side while we're asking questions, there's just no way I stump you guys? So, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about that earlier, and uh, I'm terrible at watching TV shows and movies. Um, music, on the other hand, we, we might have a band that we can do. <clears throat> So if we're gonna go TV show, uh, I if, can do office, if it's possible the office for sure. It would be preferred. Oh, it, it'd be preferred. The office is okay. Yeah, I oh, can, we yeah. can do the office. Okay, I definitely have some office trivia. Have you guys ever thought about? Like, give me a second to look it up on the side. But have you guys ever thought about um, having like a big name feature on on a single? Like, I know you said you've got four more ready to go, but thinking about like maybe a, a super villains or or something along the lines of that being like a feature on a song. I think that would be great. Honestly, you know, I wish we were at that point. I think I think we're we can build to that point. Um, but yeah, like definitely in our future, we definitely foresee trying to reach out to a a, a band that's uh, kind of within our genre realm and like doing a feature for sure. I hope it happens because I feel like it'd be it'd be really really fun and cool just uh, for promotion reasons and it it would help. I think the numbers stuff, but I, it all costs money and it has to be the right fit. I totally get it. But, uh, right, right, right. I, I have seen every episode of The Office, so I have a little back catalog trivia, but let's start here and see if we can <laughs> we can stump you guys. Let's we'll start with an easy right. one to see how well your knowledge is. Now, I've got some ghost mango. I'm sorry, citrus mango ghost pepper right here. Sorry, right there. Uh, Kevin. Kevin in The Office. Well, he played in a band. What was the name of the band he was in? Scrantonicity. That is correct! Give me a hell yeah! That's my man. That's my boy. All right, so the second one's going to be way harder than that. Clearly, you've seen a couple episodes of The Office. Um, is yeah. there, is, like, let's say hypothetically, it's October time. The lineup is set. Shows are going well. 
do you, how do you guys plan to to blow this up a little more in 2025? You don't have to go into detail into marketing, but would you like to make this like your full time job? Go touring, families okay with these things? Oh well, uh, you know that is so that's a, that's a pretty uh, short timeline. But yeah, I mean, I think everybody has those rock star dreams, right? Everybody wants to go on tour. Everybody wants to make it. Um, their life you know but also there's the aspect of how does it work for your family and so especially when you have kids you know i think it'd be uh silly if we decided to just go on tour i think we could go on tour right now and uh, make zero dollars and zero cents <laughs> it's gotta work probably out. lose money but but it's, it's the fun of being able to go oh, on dude. it oh yeah absolutely it's, it's the fun of it but um what about do, when are you guys thinking about like what I know you said a marketing strategy in this, but is there a rough estimate timetable of single four? Like, can we expect single four and five before December? Or are we talking maybe one single and then the rest kind of kicking into gear early 2025? I, I think definitely we're, I think for sure single four will be out in 2024. Um, single awesome. five, probably somewhere borderline 2024, 2025. But, um, my vision is we're going to couple that with some live shows and uh, really kind of push the envelope for our uh, promotional strategy as far as, you know, you know, you're going to have the digital marketing portion of it, but then you're going to have the actual getting out there and playing and sure. meeting people and yeah, the organic portion. It's the best of part. And, yeah, exactly. That's what we want. Oh, yeah. Eventually we just want to turn our dream into a live show that we can, if we want, take on the road and hopefully it makes money. You <laughs> know? I hope it makes money for you guys for sure. Uh, it's gonna be a lot to pay all the band members though. If you have if you have multiple, <laughs> would it just one horn player or would it be multiple horn players? You're thinking. Uh, so, on the on the studio recordings, and, and Paul Tafoya does all of our uh, horns, but on the studio recordings, we definitely have uh, like multi layered harmonic horns. I think we could probably get away with one horn player. Um, and that's kind of where we're at. Like, you know, our music set up for like one, one and a half guitar players and one and a half horn players, you know, so yep. it's just finding that blend, finding the right group of people. Um, I would be okay if the music sounded a little more stripped down, if we had the right group of people. Just a little, a little light backing track for harmony reasons, probably take care of the job. I would think, <laughs> oh, um, for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Now this is a hard office question. Question two. Uh -oh. This is a hard one. Jim has a party. They th they sing three songs at this party. One of them is Islands in the Stream by Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton. The second song is I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor, sung by Kevin. What is the name of the song sung by Phyllis? Oh, fuck, man. <laughs> How much no. time do we have? <laughs> you got uh, 10 um, seconds or so. I, I will give you a hint. Uh, it is an 80s song. Oh, God. In, um, fact, dude, I, I, in I, fact, I don't think I know any other song by this band but this one song. So it's like a borderline one-hit wonder. My wife is going to kill me for not knowing this. Oh, oh no. man. <laughs> Boys, enjoy the hot sauce. What is it? The answer is Here I Go Again by White Snake. Oh, you're so right. <laughs> All right. I'll enjoy the hot sauce uh, with you again. Right. Cheers. So you're going to pour the scotch bonnet it. on that. Oh, Jared's going nuts. Oh, oh. Get Jared it while you can. Get it while you can. <laughs> you guys are going to hate you, dude. Oh, I need beer. Jared, while you're suffering, tell me, mm -hmm. tell me your favorite munchy snack of all time. Oh God. Oh, you're gonna like this one. Ever since I was a kid, let me a good old pickle. Oh no. That's nasty. What happened? <laughs> what happened? How you feeling though? How, how, the, how are you feeling mouth wise? <laughs> I'm feeling. I'm feel, okay, I'm he's feeling. feeling he's feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot right now. Hell yeah. Oh. 
Do you guys have any any phobias, really any phobias or things that like freak you out, like height, spiders, mm. uh, anything like that? The dentist. Uh, I hate it with the drill. <laughs> <laughs> Drilling on that back molar. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> what about you, Dylan? I would oh. say for me, other than the uh, crippling uh, fear of failure, probably heights. Heights meaning like you would go skydiving. Or, or, cause like, no, God, no, dude. I mm -hmm. have an old shitty DVD of my wife skydiving in New Zealand, and uh, just watching the helmet can from that, I, I already knew I would never skydive, but after watching that, I'm like, yeah, no, you wouldn't do it. She went to New Zealand. I'm just, did you go? I'm sorry, Jared. Oh, I wasn't saying anything. I'm just breathing. My mouth is burning. <laughs> you breathe for fire, sure. <laughs> Did you, Dylan, did you go with her to New Zealand or is that before you guys oh, were married? No, no. Uh, that was before we were married. That was a really long time ago. That was, that was probably 12 or 13 years ago. <laughs> what, what's your go to munchie snack, Dylan? Oh, dude. Uncrustables. Uncrustables. Hell oh, yeah. I hate the fact dude, there's the only frozen. like three flavors, three or four flavors. They need, they need more variety. Dude, okay, so like the grape one is number two, the strawberry one's number one. What is that weird chocolate sh one they have? What there's, is that? There's like dude? a chocolate almond. Oh, the Nutella. And then there's like a honey one. Yeah, right. Well, they can't say Nutella because it's not the same brand. But you know what I mean? Like it's so gross. Like strawberry grape. Strawberry grape for sure. Uncrustable. So, you, so when you were growing up, the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, mama, mama had to cr cut the crust off. You know, crust guy. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. See, like, back in the day, man, we had to have the crust on there because mama wasn't cutting it off. And, like, now that, like, I'm an adult and I can buy my own stuff, I don't have to buy it with the crust. I can buy it, you know, without the crust. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I got I got a final office trivia. You don't have to do you don't have to do the hot sauce whether you get it right or wrong. I just figure why not throw in a third one. Let's just chug some beer. Dude, I'll it, do it anyway. Okay, I'll cool. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> final trivia question. I would say this is in the middle of, of difficulty. What color does Angela always think is whorish? Oh, God. Red. Oh, no, green, green. It is green. It is green. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan saves the day. Two out of three ain't bad. Two out of three is, is pretty damn good. Let's, let's chug some beer. Is there anything that we? I'm, I'm caught up. Headphone wise, here we go. Is there anything that we uh, did not discuss today that you guys would like to discuss that you think people watching or seeing this that see this tomorrow on YouTube need to know? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess I got a question for you. What's your favorite song? Like of all time? What of our of our three releases? What's your favorite? Oh, oh, China Shop's my favorite one. It's it's the it's the foot oh, yeah. it's the foot tapper and I just love uh, the the message in it and of course I love wearing the little bull face every time it comes on and just it just gives me good <laughs> vibes and positivity like as soon as I hear it but I like all three new That's tattoos awesome. dope, and and spam risk but I think China Shop's my favorite one. Dope, dope. Yeah, that's that's kind of the uh, vibe we're getting. I think. Uh, I think new tattoos are most popular, but I think China Shop is starting to overcome it as far as you're looking at the kind of attention it gets. Is of the four new singles, which I'm guessing are completely done, mixed and master, it's just you know, just sitting on them until the right yep. time. Is there is there any yep. crazy curveballs that we can expect? Or is it kind of the same same vibe? So fans that are already a fan of the first three will just naturally gravitate to the next four. I would say that um, as far as the styling, I, I think that um, it's less of a curveball because I think our first three releases were very different from each other. And we were making an honest effort to genre bend a little bit and try to make three different, radically different releases. Um, but the new ones, um, so uh, one of them is a cover of Your Love um, by uh, The Outfield, like the mega hit of the 80s. Uh, we turned that into a ska reggae hit. Awesome. Um, and I really think that that's, I think it's going to be good. I think people are really going to love it. Um, and the rest of oh, them yeah. are very, yes. And then we have a, a one song that's come out called Sunny Side Down. And it is a kind of 
kind of like a like the verses are like very reggae with like a kind of like a moving bass line and that that reggae off chuck and then when we get to the chorus like the power chords really come in and it's more of a hard rock song so i think that's gonna be kind of the um song that's a little bit different than what we've done before where does your guys's love of reggae begin like is there an artist when you were younger that that just made you be like i want to do this i'll let jared answer this one I- Okay, so I, I was introduced to Sublime a long time ago, and I, especially the silly songs, like I was 13, 14 years old when I was introduced. So the silly song, I was just like, Tat, that's great. And then what's funny is I, I actually kind of drifted out of liking reggae, and I was just a heavy metal guy. I mean, metalcore, deathcore, all of it, just, you mm-hmm. know, the heavier, the better. And then one day my mom took me to a Revolution concert and just fired it up for me. Revolution, Stick Figure, and Fortunate Youth. Those those were the bands. And Good Stick lineup. Figure ended up oh, becoming yeah. my favorite band. Like, Stick Figure is my, my band. And it just, I started digging deeper into it and seeing how reggae can be morphed in so many different ways and go so many different directions. Like, like I've dropped Tropidelic in the in the request line, and I mean they bring they bring funk, heavy rock, and then they're spitting bars. Like you can do so much with reggae as a, as the core of the sound, and it's know, such it just, an expansive genre. I, I I have a follow up question for for the cover song that you guys have chosen. Um, is there? Can you explain the the hurdles involved in getting clearance to do a cover song for an artist like did you have to contact any label or anything to get clearance or is it just because it's such a varied cover i don't know i've never like sent a cover song to distribution so i actually generally don't know this answer uh what are the hurdles of of doing a cover song and getting it distributed so i've i've researched this before um we haven't actually submitted the song yet uh for that um and I'm not really sure what the threshold for time is, but um, the way I understand it is if it's a song that's a certain age, you have to get some kind of approval from the label that owns it to cover it. But if once it reaches a, a, a an older age, it's pretty much kind of to cover its public domain. Um, I think the song that we covered it came out in 1981. Um, so I don't think we actually need um approval from anybody to release it i think we can just release it as is clearly we're gonna send emails out and try to get some kind of approval um there's also websites that you can clear an approval quickly by uploading the the master mp3 or wave file to them they'll clear it um i think you pay like 15 bucks and they they clear it but we're not really worried about the legality of us re- releasing it. It's such an old song that um, yeah, I don't. There should be no legal issues. People upload covers every day. I'm just curious, like, oh, yeah. wh- right, what right, the process right. yeah. was for that, for sure. Um, well, I fellas, we're uh, find out cause I'm not sure yet. this was fun. Jared, I, I peeped that you had a little Jaguar symbol on your glass. You must be a, uh, a Trevor Lawrence fan, I'm guessing. How the Jaguars doing this? What's, what's the record going to be at the end of the year? Playoff bound? I. Honestly, yeah, Eight I think so. I, I think I, I, the Chargers man, took a step right. back. The Chargers right. took a spe- step right, back. Tampa Bay. So I think I think uh, the 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 well, did you guys grab any wide receivers in off season? I think yes. you lost a wide yes, receiver. Yes, we did. Uh, I know we got Thomas Jr. Um, we grabbed a couple guys from some other team. I, the names, the names, like I. I I follow it, but not good enough to know every player's name. <laughs> no worries. But you guys, uh, you guys attend some games every now and then. Yeah, if so, we can afford the, it, I haven't been. Oh, go for it, Dylan. Uh, well, I was gonna say I'm a Bucks fan, so the Bucks are playing the Jags in Jacksonville for the preseason game this year, and I'm definitely going to that. Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop it! Don't even. We're I'm a Vikings fan. I'm a Vikings fan. I knew I knew the Vikings would be one and zero last year. There's no way Mayfield takes <laughs> takes game one week one. Mother f- took it. Took Dude, it. Up. I'm telling you. How, how did it feel when Baker Mayfield drove uh, what's his name number seven? through the sideline for the first down that sealed the game. I'm telling you, dude, I'm a huge Bucks fan. I'm, I'm excited for the season. 
it's hard being a Vikings fan, but uh, I, I stay loyal. I stay loyal. <laughs> They're actually coming to the Rams this year, uh, two days before my birthday. So I got tickets to that. Uh, the oh, LA, yeah. LA Rams are oh, an hour okay. and a half drive. Yeah, so awesome. I'm able to catch have it. To, uh, you, have, you, have you been to many NFL games? Many. I've seen uh, the Vikings play live. This will be my like 10th or 11th game. Um, when I lived Hell in yeah, when dude. I lived in West Palm, yeah. my dad, uh, who does like mutual funds for a living, he's now retired. Uh, he worked for Franklin Templeton, and they had their own box in the Tampa Stadium, which was uh, like a wow. skybox near the boat. Yeah. I've never been on the boat, dude, but I would all I always wanted to like party <laughs> on the Tampa Bay Bucks boat and like fire the cannon when they scored a touchdown or something. Hell yeah, That's great. man! That would be cool. Uh, boys, do me a favor, uh, plug plug and promote uh, social media links. And then if it's okay with you, I slap this on YouTube tomorrow, send you the link late tonight so we can we can promote it. Hell yeah, man. Social media links. Drop drop some social media links for me. Oh. Go for it. Uh, Dylan. Here. Uh, oh, <laughs> I dropped my camera. No worries. <laughs> I'm bad at technology. Hold on. Because if you Google Lady Ebor, you guys come up first. Like there is nobody else that comes up. So is it just, right. is, is it just game, at, it? <laughs> at Lady Ebor and everything, or is there any very very Pretty like? Much, yeah. No, no, no. It's at Lady Ebor on yeah. like literally everything. Easy, easy. Well, well, Jared and Dylan, I really appreciate your time. I I was very much looking forward to this one. Congratulations on winning the Tournament Champions Ten. Did you receive the package? Thank you. We did. It got here quick. Hell yeah. It got here really quick. I, I try to I try to be speedy on that. I try to be quick. <laughs> so boys, this yeah, is we fun. Appreciate you for having us awesome. too. Oh, it's my pleasure. My Dude. pleasure. We'll do a follow up Thank uh, you so uh, much. when when single four is ready, let's say hypothetically September, October, please let me know in advance so we can get you back on the show to promote when that single's ready. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jared Dillon, enjoy the rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, Lady Bar! Give me a hell yeah. Thank you guys, this is fun. Flamingos! Flamingos! That's great. <laughs> Cheers guys, I appreciate it.